Well, good morning and uh, welcome back. Today we're going to go through the startup procedure on this uh, Bell uh, 47G4A. And if you watched the previous videos, you know we have the pre-flight inspection is all complete. We're out here on the ramp and uh, facing about into the wind. Uh, we can look out and see the tip of the row of main rotor blades so we can confirm that that's been untied. I got my knee board here. I got my startup checklist here. So uh, uh, let's get started. And before we actually start the helicopter, what we're going to do is we're going to run through the whole checklist without actually starting the engine first. And I'm going to point and show you where what I'm doing and where I'm doing it and where we're gonna, looking for our readings and in what order and why so you can understand what's going on because when we start the helicopter there's going to be so much noise in here I'm afraid it's going to drown out the whole audio so the second time we go through and we actually start the helicopter again I'll point to what I'm doing and uh, so you then you'll understand uh, what we're looking at and why we're looking at it in, in the correct order even though you won't be able to hear the audio so uh, let's start. Uh, I've got the blade tie down is removed and confirmed. Yes, we are. We can look out and see the main rotor is untied. Fuel uh, fueled and fuel cap secured and confirmed and all the caps confirmed. I did a final walk around to check all those caps to make sure they were all snug and I didn't leave anything on the helicopter during the pre-flight. Seat belts fastened. Yes, I have my seat belt fastened. If you have a passenger make sure their seat belt is fastened if not make sure it's just clipped so it doesn't flap around and uh, maybe get caught in the controls whatever passenger brief if you have a passenger make sure they're briefed on what you're going to do and what they can expect and uh, also uh, what they need to do if they need to get out of this helicopter unexpectedly in case of an emergency all our avionics switches we look down here and we have the avionics off in fact all the switches except for our strobe is off which we leave on fuel shut off is over here and uh, make sure that's pushed all the way in hydraulic boost pump switch look that's right over here and that's down and off and next in our checklist we make sure the key is in remember you ever walk out to your plane and make and all of a sudden oh shoot i forgot the key make sure you have the key before you continue with your checklist and it's in the ignition so uh, okay that brings us up hydraulic boost we got the key in and now we're going to loosen up the frictions just a little but we're going to do a control check so we're going to loosen those up just a tiny bit cyclic friction there the collective friction here just a tiny bit and then we're going to check freedom of the controls we're going to check the pedals first and I got these one at a time because I'm holding the uh, the camera we are going to do the cyclic here and run around in a big circle make sure it's not binding anywhere all the way around and bring it back to neutral and we're going to do the collective same bring it all the way up and all the way down check the throttle make sure the friction set on your throttle and you can do that in whatever order you want or you really coordinate it you can do that all at the same time but uh, develop a good habit pattern and stick to it do it the same way every time uh, good habit patterns will uh, keep you out of trouble and back to our checklist we need to put the frictions back where they were make sure all the the controls are in neutral. I keep my foot on the pedal down there to keep them neutral and I kind of lock my uh, legs around the cycle to keep that from moving while we're doing all this. Back to my checklist, uh, our engine start up and warm up. We make sure our carb heat is cold right here. Remember this uh, helicopter has a self-adjusting carburetor so there's no mixture but the handle is still here and it would be all the way up if you were using it. The intercom switch that is on the radios uh they're off right now so we get the helicopter started the strobe of course is on the ignition switch magnetos we're going to turn them all the way to both all the way to the right engine priming we're going to prime this helicopter. You do that by twisting out the throttle. We're going to twist it out three or four times. And then we're going to set it uh, with this mark right at 12 o'clock. We know that's about a good spot for this helicopter to start. So that's what we'll do. That primes it and then just cracks it open enough to start it. 
you want to check make sure your area is clear outside the helicopter also in case somebody's not really paying attention you want to yell outside all clear just to get their attention in case they're not looking over this way now it's time to hit the starter the starter button on this helicopter is right here we're going to hit the starter let it crank it and as soon as it fires off yeah, we're going to adjust the throttle just a little bit come over here and check the rpms what we want to do is uh, have the engine rpms run at about the 16 1700 rpms and as soon as we do that this has a centrifugal clutch so we're going to expect to see that rotor blade starting to turn and this is all going to happen pretty fast. We're going to come down here and we're going to check to make sure you got oil pressure here. And we're going to turn on the generator or alternator if it's been updated. Make sure it's pulling a load. Now we're going to come right back here and make sure that the uh, rotor RPM is moving up. When it gets to about the, the 15 degree mark here, we're going to roll off the throttle and join the needles. And then we're going to slowly bring these needles up to... Uh, 22, 2300 RPMs to let this uh, helicopter warm up. Bring it up that far because at that point the centrifugal clutch is fully engaged and there's no slippage. And what we're waiting for then for is to get a oil temp right here of at least 40 which is in the green and wait for, to get a cylinder head temp of at least 100 before we can proceed with our engine run up. And while we're doing that, we can turn on our radios and get the ATIS or ISOS, wherever you are. Let our uh, uh, transponder warm up. We'll put it in standby and uh, we'll set up our navigation. If you have GPS, then when you set up your navigation. And as soon as we get the uh, oil temperature and cylinder head temperature, we'll go ahead and, and do a run up. Uh, do the run up. Uh, Bring the RPMs all the way up to 3,100 RPMs, and then we're going to do the mag check. Mag check, we're going to come to the right first, and we're looking for no more than a 200 RPM drop within two seconds. 50 difference between the two uh, magnetos. Okay, we're going to go to the right first and check that. Bring it back to both. Bring it back to both and let it clear. Sorry, I wasn't had the camera in the wrong spot. We're going to bring it to right first. Check our RPMs. Bring it back to both, let it clear, bring it to the left, check our RPMs, bring it back to both and make sure that clears. And we do the right first and the left second because we only want that one click to go back to both. Because uh, sometimes it'll happen, you'll get distracted and all of a sudden you'll bring it back and you think it's in both but it's in left. So to avoid that happening to us, we are going to go ahead and uh, check the magnetos right first then left. Yeah, we're going to bring down the carb heat and make sure there's a rise in the carb heat temp. Make sure there's a little bit of drop in the RPM. And then we'll turn the carb heat off. We'll make sure the temp is going down and the RPMs come back up. After we've done that, we're going to go ahead and split the needles. We'll make sure that rotor will disconnect. We're going to roll off the throttle with a little bit of a right pedal and make sure we get a good split on those needles. Then we'll bring it back up and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, here we are. We're ready to start the engine. So uh, carburetor heat is cold. Master switch is on. Strobe we have on. Mags, we we'll turn them to both. Okay, following checklist, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, prime. I'll give it one, two, three, we'll do four, set our mark for start, make sure that the area is clear, clear, and it is, now we're ready to hit, uh, we're ready to hit the start button, here you go.